don't sniff that with a Tylenol. Like, I became a motherfucking pill fiend in that hood. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking about a lot of things, man. And it goes from what's going on with my case. My bad right now. I'm, I'm gonna just be real. I'm lit as f right now. It's like my second day out, technically. My first day out was more lit. I couldn't even do a video. And I damn sure couldn't do no first day out music video or like record a song. But I'm gonna be telling y'all about a jail story time and what really went down behind the bars. It goes back to these these cases I was fighting. You know, I got caught with CBD and they said it looked like weed. So they said, hey, you know, fuck you, uh, I'm gonna lock you up. I skipped court, never paid attention to the court date, so I had a warrant. I get locked up for the warrant. They doubled my bond. Instead of paying 10% this time, they made me pay uh, 20%. So that happened, right? And then I got out and I didn't pay attention again. I didn't think the court date was going to be that fast. But I guess since it's such a, like, like just a misdemeanor date, they really didn't care about it. Like, they were trying to get it out the way. But this is how I get locked up this time. I'm I'm driving, couldn't see somebody when I was like trying to turn right, and I sideswiped somebody. So boom, I'm like, oh fuck! I, I hit I, like sideswiped, I sideswiped a truck, and then <clears throat> I'm like, damn, I gotta go and talk to him and do the insurance and this and that, right? Cause, but he wanted to call the cops, bro. So I'm like, like, what am I gonna do? I figured I had a warrant because, like, maybe it was a thought because last time I had a warrant, I didn't even know. So that's why I'm like, damn, I have a warrant probably. I tried to tell him, like, bro, fuck them, like, fuck the cops, like, you, we could just handle this right now, I could give you a rack. So I pull out, like, two bands or whatever, I'm like, I could just give you a thousand dollars right now. That shit will fix them, fix them little ass scratches. He trying to get a whole new ass bumper and shit. Like, he just, like, trying to play the insurance. You could tell, like, just trying to play the insurance card. So, like, he trying to get a policy number. He trying to get all this shit, right? I'm like, damn. Long story short, cops come, like, four or five hours later, bro. I'm, I'm just, like, I could have got high. I could have did all this shit before I went to jail. I should have took off on the ass. This fool locks me up, says I have one. I'm like, bet. I already kind of knew, you know. He's like, I'm going to make sure that that's right. Yada, yada. I was like, for sure. But he was cool. He was a cool cop. He wasn't like an asshole, you know what I mean? I end up in jail thinking I'm going to get a bond. So I, I'm there waiting for like six hours, eight hours. And I'm like, wait, why haven't I seen the judge yet? Like, why? This shit taking long as hell. But our county takes long, so... This ain't no regular, like, I get out in five hours, eight hours. Nah, this shit, like, your shit barely getting started in eight hours. So, I finally get, I, I call one of my peoples, and they tell me that I don't have a bond. It says W-R-O-B, and that's my first time hearing that, or, like, even the first time seeing that from my shit. They always build me out. After that, I go to the back. Let me tell you how this process is. If you've never been in San Antonio jail, Man, that shit crazy. All, all they do is it's a heavyweight process. So you're gonna be in you're gonna be in one room for six hours. You're gonna be in another room, not room, but like an area for like twelve to twenty four hours. Then from there they put you in the back, they dress you out, you wait there for like two hours. And then you go to the classification wait for classification and that should take another eight hours probably hopefully sooner just depends what day you go in but average on every time I went like eight hours so like it takes me like 36 hours just to fucking see a bed and a blanket from there you just eating straight bologna sandwiches made from fucking who knows where bro that shit sick they used to be more sick they a little better now I ain't gonna lie Maybe I'm just saying that because I just got out of county, but um, I don't even know. They finally put me in a, a, a cell with a bunkie because all the times I went, I was in like either the annex or I was in South Tower, which is like 
It's an open and you got blocks and shit. It's weird to explain, but it's like bunkies. Look like a fucking orphanage and shit. Look like I don't even know. It's concentration camp type shit. But the county, they put me in a two man cell. So, like, when they said I'm going to the main jail, I'm like, it's either a good or a bad thing. I always saw it as a bad thing because. You don't know who your cell is. Last time I had a two-man cell, that fool was farting and shit. I, I, I was asleep, but he, they threw him in there, right? I'm like, and I seen him in the booking, too. And I was like, hell no, nah, right? Like, he smelled. He's a homeless dude. I'm trying to, like, not get, catch COVID and shit. I'm, I'm trying not to get sick. And then I see him in my cell. They threw that, that fool in my cell. That's the first time I ever had a, a celly. And I had a bag of Doritos. I hear some wrinkling and shit. This nigga eating my bag of Doritos, bro. And I ain't about to lay my hands on him because I'm about to get sick and shit. So I had a bad experience with the cellies. And they put me in this, in this, I can't say really like too much details because a lot of shit went down that I can't. I'm not about to say who it was. But anyway, boom. I walk in. Bro tells me, the officer tells me that my cell is cool. So I, I go, I'm walking up the stairs, and as soon as I come in, you see these two guys or whatever, and they're like, they know who I am, so they're like, Young Mike, oh, that's fucking Young Mike, right? Da, 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 da. And then they shook my hand, they're like, Damn, Young Mike, I'm like, yeah. and I, I put my mask down because I had a mask and shit. High as breath, you could smell my breath and shit. I'm just like, Hell yeah, boom, shake the hand and shit. Whatever, they just showing love, right? Walking up the stairs, I go in in, in, the, in my room and I see my bunkie on the floor. And they didn't give me a mattress yet. They just gave me my bed sheets and shit, my my shit. You know what I mean? So I walk in the motherfucking room and I see my celly on the floor. And like he just like goes like that. He's like, "What's up, man?" I'm like, "What's up, bro?" And I shake his hand. He probably just jacked off and shit, no homo. But like, I didn't think of that. I was just like, what's up, gang? You know what I mean? Like, this gotta, you gotta be cool. This should be the person. It's my celly, I guess, you know? And I just see a room. It's just like all these drawings around and shit. Like, all this shit, like, it, it look crazy. Like, no fucking window. Just like straight bricks. Bricks and walls drums and shit crazy. So I'm like, okay, I got the top set, like not the top set, the top bunk. So I hop on the top bunk. But all like his stuff was in the way, all the paperwork and like all his stuff and I didn't want to ruin anything. So I had to like fucking parkour up there, you know what I mean? He saw I didn't have a bed, so he's like, You can have mine and he gives me his bed. I don't know what he did on that bed, but I took the bed because I'm fucking trying to go to sleep. Like, I just came from 36 hours in, in, in the county, so I'm like, fuck. Boom. I mean, in the booking. But I put I put the bed thing right there, and I put my, my seat over there, and I just fucking crashed out. I ain't eat no breakfast. Like, that shit, that shit nasty, right? Like, my appetite still not, not all there, so I didn't eat no breakfast. And I have this celly. And you don't know who, who or what this person is capable of. So I started thinking, like, let me see what he's about, you know. And he starts talking to me about life. He starts talking to me about like real stuff. So I'm communicating with him. I mean, talking to me about like that he he does music. And he showed me some music. He had a lot of rhythm flows without a beat. So all his flows were just like different melodies and shit. So it wasn't hear it on beat, but you could hear how he sang. Long story short, he found out who I was. He said, wait, you're young Mike? And I was like, yeah. He's like, oh shit. I had a guy in here that does music videos and he was talking about you and this and that. So I was like, damn, that's crazy how that works out. Cause that was just the person that was in there last. They're saying they don't have a TV and shit like this. And I mean, homie, he's saying that he knows one of my homies and he knows one of my lawyers and this and that. So we're just chopping it up. But what I didn't know is all this love that I was getting at first, it was like weird, right? Cause 
just peep game. Like, I'm getting love from everybody. Like, everybody's just like, it's cool. But it's so weird in jail because they don't give a fuck who you is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you is nobody in jail. When you in jail, you just like everybody else in that hole. Like, that shit just, it's, it's ugly, you know? How we're all just trapped in that hole. So it's like kind of a shame to be there type shit. So I'm like, damn, like I should be doing better things. The first day was cool. I got to talk to my peoples and they sent a lawyer to court trying to get me a bond. They're saying that they'll go tomorrow, like the next day, and they're gonna go to court and they're gonna see if they can get me a bond then again. They're gonna try again. Apparently, that shit closed early. Like, I don't even think there was no court, honestly, because everybody was saying that. I don't even know what happened, honestly. Just thinking like, damn, I'm going day by day. I'm eating this nasty ass food. I finally got commissary though. I got commissary, so I got a lot of shit, you know, like all the wrong shit too. I just told the girl, I said, give me everything. Like, just one of everything. Give me one shampoo, one this, one that, one that, one, 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 one. one. She just gave me a shitload of sweets and shit. I don't even eat sweets, so I'm like, damn. I got all these sweets. I see these fools eating soups and shit. That shit looking good. I'm like, damn, I want a soup. So I started trading all my sweets for the soups and shit. But the, the sweets cost $2, the soups cost $1. So I'm playing myself in that hole. I'm like, damn. Then I got this commissary again. I got all the soups. I got breast, chicken breast. I got all that shit, right? But that's another story. Just say, let's just say I'm eating good in that hole. And they, they're giving me Tylenols. And like another circle pill, I don't even know what the fuck they were giving me, which is kind of fucking weird, right? Because I didn't even sign up for that shit. And then from there, they started giving me four pills. So I was like, what the fuck? What are they really giving my ass, right? Like, like I'm in that bitch, probably like, this is the weird thing too. I, I didn't really think of it. Like, I would take those four pills. So, like, that was the first day, but, like, this, yeah, I took those four pills. And that night, I slept good as fuck. And I slept 14 hours a day and I was only out for like eight hours and like the day was going by quick like that I'm not gonna care that's how the pills started coming in for me at least but I'm talking to my celly when I was talking to my celly he was saying that he knew my people and if y'all knew me I was setting, telling y'all how to bag a weed to sell and I was posting it on YouTube all the real ones know that right so the plug that was giving me that at that time, my celly grew up with him. And he knew exactly who I was talking about because he knew his cousin, my homie's cousin that I grew up with that knew that plug that was plugging us in. He became cool with me and he started like trusting me more. He gave me a razor one day. So this is how I started getting like prepared, like just for like a doubt. Like I'm like, why does he have a razor? So I asked him, uh, like, he, he put, like, some shit. I can't even, I'm going to tell you. So on the mask right here, this is shit right here. And he'll get a razor. And he'll, he'll uh, savage at me. I can't even tell you that. Out. And he, he'll put that shit around the razor little hole or some shit. And he'll make it like that. And you can slice someone's neck like that. So I, I didn't know, right? So when he tied that shit around it, I was like, I was like, like, what the fuck is that? And he went like this, and he just cut his fucking bed. I was savage as fuck, right? I was like, oh, My celly starts giving me pills. Like, I'm getting these rowdy ass dreams. I'm telling him, like, I can't sleep. Like, I'm waking up in cold sweats and shit, y'all. Like, literally cold sweats from dreams that are fucking so vivid. Couldn't sleep, so I'm telling my celly, like, this shit. Fucking with me, right? So he starts giving me pills, like from from other people, right? He would just like get off love. They'll just they had all these old people and shit, and they were getting fucking random ass pills. So I took this wrong pill one day. I started sniffing this shit though, because like I really wanted to go to sleep. I really wanted to get high. Like this shit boring, right? And like some some people were saying, oh, daddy, daddy, you could get this and that in there. It was kind of hard, so it was like a ball game. It was like you could, you could get fucked over, or you could just like, I 
I don't know. It's just how you play cards, right? Can't say too much because this is dry snitching, but let's just say I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to do it, but I want, I wanted to do it, you know, because I didn't want to stay sober in there. So I'm sober as a gopher, sniffing these motherfucking Tylenols, trying to go to sleep. The Tylenols that were given to me though, and I thought if you sniff them, you could get high, but I was. I wasn't getting high, I was just like going to sleep. I guess that's getting high, I don't really fucking know. But I was all fucked up, like just sleeping in that bitch, right? One day, he gives me this motherfucker. Well, I was getting I was getting some random pills too from this white boy. You know they're fucking crazy pills if you get it from a white boy. No no offense to the white people, no offense at all, but like, you know, it's a crazy, crazy shit. And he was giving to me in, a, in like a ramen noodles pack, uh, flavor pack, all like wrapped up and shit, right? So I was, I was break that up and I was sniff that with a Tylenol. Like I became a motherfucking pill fiend in that hood. Not a pill fiend, but just like that's all I was doing was just get high or something. I trade that shit for a super sweet or a bag of chips and shit, right? Just fucking, why not? I uh, get this one pill for my celly. I honestly, this is when I like stopped doing this shit because I was like, what the fuck am I doing? What am I fucking, like a test dummy ass trying to see what burns in my nose and shit. Because like, I was sniffing the Tylenol, I was sniffing the little circle or whatever, all these pills and none of them burn my nose. So I was like, I was not prepared for this shit. So I crushed this one down, it's like 2 a.m. I'm talking to myself for a minute. Like, just about some real shit, right? It's hot as breath almost blew, blew that shit off the counter. I sniffed this shit. As soon as I sniffed it, that shit burned. Like, burned like a motherfucker. Like, I sniffed chili or some shit. Not even chili, like a hot chili ghost pepper or some shit like that. Just put it all in my nose and pick my nose with this shit. Because, goddamn, that shit burned and it just got worse, right? And it went. All the way, like, I was sniffing, trying to see, like, if it will go away. And hell, nah, that shit went up to my brain and shit. That shit had me fucking tearing up. It was going all the way down to my fucking stomach, and it was just burning, bro. Like, I I'm trying to drink Kool-Aid. I got the Kool-Aid in there. I'm making Kool-Aid. I drunk, like, a whole gallon of Kool-Aid straight out the sink and shit. By the way, we watching, I'm watching my motherfucking boxes out of my motherfucking at the sink and shit, I am washing my socks out the sink and shit, giant shit, this nigga don't give me no motherfucking boxes or no motherfucking, they don't wash our clothes like how they say they supposed to, they say, oh yeah, this and that, man, where the hell my new shit at, like, this shit crazy, right, so, I'm over here drinking out the sink, like it's fucking delicious and shit, that shit just boom, drinking, 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 my throat burning, my motherfucking, my ears hurt, <laughs> My chest and shit, I feel like I'm about to fucking have, like, what the fuck? This shit was not meant to get sniffed, bro. I'm like, what is this pill? Like, this bro, give me this pill, like, half a pill to you, and then give me the whole pill. This shit was weird. Boom. I'm sniffing, like, just got the sniffles and shit. This shit hurting. I try to go to sleep, but I can't sleep because the pain and shit, like, that shit kept me up. Like, this shit burning my nose, like, all fucking night. Like, my motherfucking nose was getting, blood cells was dying and shit. And then, after that, I, I had these weird dreams about, like, AI and shit. It was, like, some weird ass, the weirder dreams, like, the weirdest dreams. Like, I thought it would help me sleep. That's the whole reason why I did that shit, so it could help me sleep. Fuck no, that shit ain't help me sleep. And then three, four times I'm getting up at night, right? Boom, boom, boom. I'm trying to see, like, this shit can start burning. I'm wrenching the shit out of my nose and shit. Man, let me tell you, I, I ain't did that shit no more. After that, I said, fuck this. Like, how the hell I'm gonna get, I gotta get some type of weed shit in here, right? I gotta get some edibles or some shit. So I was trying to get some edibles in that bitch and shit. But I woke up the next day and to this day basically this shit hurt.
This shit hurt, and I ain't never doing that again. That shit burned my nose for real, for real, like inside out or something. Like it has some salts in there that do something. You gotta shit that shit out, but it's not supposed to go to your nose. I feel bad for my asshole though, still, if you eating that shit. That shit got like some multi grain minerals in that hole because that shit burned the fuck out of my nose. It's like, I don't know what the hell that is. Even to today, I'm dealing with this problem. So I don't know if I see a doctor or some shit. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. But anyway, that's what happened in jail. After that, I got the court date. I finally got my shit dismissed. So, you know. Hey, guys, guys, guys. I'm glad that y'all, you know, y'all showing love to a real one, right? If y'all enjoyed this story time, make sure y'all drop a thumbs up for more jail story times. If not, nah, fuck that. We're gonna do more jail story times. Make sure y'all drop a thumbs up, man. And I'm gonna give y'all some good jail story times. Okay.